then if you make more money than me, if you're stronger than me and you're taller than me, you'll still simp for me every single time. So I'm still superior. The most wealthy man in the world, I'll still make you simp for me. Guys, welcome to Better Bachelor. My name is Joker with a face for radio and a voice for print. Uh, I did a video on this gal, I don't know, a few months ago. She went viral. She's an Only Fools content creator, and she's 26 years old, and uh, she's known as Australia's most, I don't know, sexually active woman, I guess, with 300 body count in a, in a year. Just one year, 300. Now, she says she only had 12 before that. Who knows? It's, that's at least <clears throat> 312 people at the tender age of 26. And she recently did an interview which I think is very telling because we're going to listen to the interview here in just a second. But she says, I just wanted to have fun while I was young. I just wanted to explore. I didn't want to settle down. I just wanted to, you know, all the excuses. And then at the end of the video, she says something that is very telling. Obviously, if you see the thumbnail, you kind of know what she's getting to. Uh, but there's something even f more than that. And I think this really has... I mean, it really tells you where society is today. Because when when all is said and done, these women still want the man to be the earner. They still want him to be masculine. They still want him to be uh, the provider and take care of them and look after them and all the traditional things. Yet women like this are the farthest thing from traditional. So men turn around and say, okay, for that deal, I want you to be traditional. What's traditional? Be young, be healthy, be fun, be outgoing, um, uh, treat me well, don't cheat, don't lie, uh, have a low body count or no body count, uh, be in shape, don't be excessively overweight. And what are we told? How dare you? How dare you? Well, let's listen to the interview. It's about five minutes long. I accidentally got one segment in here twice so we can actually jump into it. This is, a, I don't know, 30 or 35 minute, and I, I snipped it way down. But let's listen it's going to give you a little background on this lady if you didn't see my other video I did about this. And then we'll pick up from there. I just don't know what happened. She recently went viral for sleeping with 300 people in a year. So I got so many questions about this. My first question is, how does one go viral like this? How did this news break and where did it break first? So I think it all started when I started sharing my sex stories on TikTok. I'm very open. I've just started sharing all my sexual experiences on my TikTok account. So she's sharing all her, her experiences on her TikTok account. Let's go to TikTok. Uh, how safe is TikTok? User uh, under the age of 13 can't post videos or comment, and it's curated for younger audiences, 13 to 15, etc. Only user 16 and over can live stream. What are the checks on this? When you're signing up, punch in your age. That's it. So she's she's putting this content out to people on TikTok where there, there, and I understand there is no age gate on the internet, no matter what site you go to. I understand that. But when you're going to those sites, you're looking explicitly for that content. When you're going to TikTok, you're going for every, like all social media. It's kind of like going to Twitter. Now, I don't like, I don't like it on any of the kind of normie regular websites, but it is what it is. But the, the point being, though, that it's specifically targeting TikTok where anyone of any age can pretty much get on there. But if you're going to Twitter, if you're going to Twitch, if you're going for any of these sites, it's just social media. That's my first problem with what she's doing with her advertising on TikTok. Australia's number one radio show saw my TikTok and asked me to come on the show. And that's sort of where it all started because they labeled me Australia's most sexually active woman. And um, that's when I told the world, I guess, that I had slept with 300 people in a year. This gal that goes out and admits to being one of the most promiscuous women in history gets invited on an Australian popular talk show. Yana Hawking, who writes articles about basically sleeping around and just having fun, gets invited uh, or gets invited to write articles for DailyMail.uk, uh, DailyMail.au. Uh, They're promoting this stuff. But if I, a content creator, or Kevin Samuels, or Tate, or Fresh and Fit or Coach Greg Adams, if we talk about this stuff saying, hey, you know what we're going to promote instead? We're going to promote men staying away from women like this. We're told we're toxic, we're harmful, we're shameful. They do not want you talking against the narrative that women should be able to do whatever they want without any, any, any actions 
or any um, consequences for their actions. Also, if I sound a little gravelly today, I might be coming down with a little bit of a cold, so I apologize for that. Um, no, I've learned very early on in my only career to not read social media comments because it affects my mental health too much because people are very mean online. So I try to avoid it as much as possible. Obviously, sometimes I see a comment here or there, so I know kind of what people are saying, but I do my best not to spend hours scrolling through them because uh, I wouldn't be very happy, I don't think. <laughs> okay. I wouldn't be very healthy if I read the comments on my content. This is society telling you, don't think what you're doing is good. We don't think you're a good role model. We don't think you're a good person in general. Now, yes, you may put out a post and you get 10,000 thirsty simps on there drooling all over themselves. But if 10,000 other people out there, whether it's women, whether it's maybe parents of somebody that's around her age, uh, whether it's men, if we're saying, hey, this is not good, you need to stop it, she just ignores that. Now, that's fine. I get comments all the time that I ignore. Society's trying to tell you, you're making a mistake. You need to make a correction before you go down down this path too far. And she just says, I don't want to read it because it, it makes me feel bad about myself. And that's not good. Well, it's supposed to make you feel bad about yourself. You know, if you ever wonder why human beings are kind of creeped out by spiders or snakes um, or things moving in the dark, uh, that's kind of built into your DNA. And the reason why is to keep you safe because a lot of times those snakes and spiders and creepy things and things moving in the dark, they want to end you or they can't end you. That's nature's way of saying, well, everybody that wasn't afraid of this stuff, they didn't make it because they probably, they probably got bit or eaten. But the ones that did survive, well, they are afraid of these things. It's kind of natural selection. Nature, you know, society is our modern nature. Nature is trying to tell this woman, don't do this. Don't do this. You may make, be making money. You may have lots of thirsty guys going after you. Don't do this. You're, you're going to regret it. And she chooses to ignore it. I'm just curious here. Now, there is something called nymphos, like people that really like to have sex a lot. Is that what you are? Or is it something that like, did you plan to do this? Is this was this kind of premeditated? Like, I'm going to do, I'm going to do this 300 people thing and then I'm going to go viral. I just really like sex or I'm just like really lonely. Like, why, why, why? I'm just curious. Like, why did you do like, was it part of an entrepreneurial venture? Well, again, was that in the back of your mind? Or was it more just like, I just like sex. I'm just going to do this. And then this organically happened. No, I, it wasn't premeditated. I, before the 300 people in a year, I think my body count was like 12. Um, and I was like, you know, do you know, I, 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 I got to interrupt with this. Do you notice everybody now, everybody now refers to it as body count? Who started that? Communities. Men's communities started started the term body count. And it is now it's the kind of the used term by the younger generations. If you don't think that men's content gets into the zeitgeist, you got another thing coming. I had that much sexual experience. I had an only at the time. I was like, you know what? I'm going to start putting myself out there, going on the dating apps, going on dates, starting to be a bit more sexually open, trying new things. Like it was more of like a me thing just to like explore myself, I guess. And then obviously it's beneficial to my only as well. Um, but yeah, I never expected any of this to happen. And it definitely was not planned, which is insane. Now, when this becomes a business model, and, and I think she says she's in the 0.02% of only fools content creators, which for her, I'm not going to shame the game. If there's thirsty men, I shame the thirsty men, giving her the money just to see her without her clothes on or doing a little bit of the old in and out. Uh, I don't shame her for making the money. But the, but the issue that I have with all of this is that she was 26. Now, look, all the time I say, hey, she's a good looking uh, woman. And people are like, oh, no, she's this. or let's, let's be honest. If this was a gal without all the makeup and without everything else, if she was just a natural looking girl, you can at least say she's average or better. If she was a girl that was probably, you know, she has a, like she has a, a good body shape to her. She's not heavy. She's, if this was the cheerleader at your high school, if this was the girl sitting on a pew next to you in church, you'd probably think like, well, hey, she's cute. I'd like to make her a girlfriend. The problem, the, 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 the issue I see with these kind of things is that at 26, she's made the determination, I just want to have fun. I just want to enjoy myself. I just want to put myself out there. I want to explore. And time and time again, we talk about the damage this actually does to people. 
Uh, I looked up I looked up a study on this. This is from PMC Pub uh, PubMed Central, where uh, let me let me mark this, where they they talk about this is the National Library of Medicine where they did a study the relationship between multiple partners and anxiety, uh, deep sadness, and and substance dependency. And and they go down. Th oh, I highlighted that. Darn it, I I skipped off my, I skipped off what I had. They say here. The psychological impact of such relationships may be because the relationship aspect of the sex is missing. It is, therefore, it is impersonal and therefore may be negative emotional consequences, or it may be due to emotional consequences of the breakups of multiple short term relationships. Further, men and women may differ in how they experience such relationships in so much as they vary, uh, they vary in reasons for engaging in the action itself. In other words, men pretty much do it just to do it. Women usually do it because they're, they're missing something in their lives. Now, in this case, she says, it wasn't that I was missing anything. It was that she just wanted to sleep around like dudes do. But they say there's evidence from these studies that alcohol or substance use, as well as antisocial behavior in childhood and adolescence, predicts risky behavior like this. They also go on to say, uh, I forget which where the paragraph was, but they also go on to say that women are much more affected by this than men are. And later on, uh, they, they usually have substance issues or other disorders uh, in, their, in, their, in their later life, so to speak. I've lost the paragraph now because I'm an idiot and I highlighted something at the top. But this is, this is, there's, there's math behind this. And what makes me so mad so many times is that when we talk about these issues, people say, oh, you hate women or, oh, you just want women to be able to do whatever. It's like, no, no, no. There's, there, we're talking from, from real science here that I don't, we don't want to blast these women for, for being whatever. We want them to stop doing what they're doing because they're hurting themselves. They're hurting what other women think. They're hurting what men think of women. They're breaking up marriages. They're divorcing. They're fight, they're keeping kids just so they can get more more money from the courts. Everything is falling apart because the it doesn't matter what I do. It only matters what I want. And you guys can't talk about this. But they, I could go on. I could go on. Like you know, there's a rating system for guys. What is your rating system when you're going through, you know, picking the 300? Is it like they got to be a seven and up? What's your rating of a seven? Have you lowered your standards to get to the 300? Because like, again, if you have that volume, I would think quality would go down. What is, what's your criteria here? No, I am seriously picky. Like I would not go below a seven. Obviously personality is probably more important to me, but if it is just going to be a one night stand, then I would rather go off looks because at the end of the day, we're not going to be doing that much talking. So yeah, yeah I, I would never drop below a seven. I think a lot of people think that I literally will just have sex with anything, but that's not true. Um, there's millions of people in Australia, so I have plenty to choose from. And I definitely do have a standard and I generally don't go below a seven out of 10 in my eyes. When we talk about problems with dating, look at the men that are able to sleep with her. Now, she did 300 in a year. That comes out to what, six six 6.5 per week. That's one a day. That's probably, I think she said at one point, she, the most she's done is five in one day. And if you do find, happen to find her, uh, her content online, she's not wearing, she's not making the gentleman she's with wear anything. Yes, she also says she goes and gets tested every two weeks. But if you're, if you're with 14 people, which is almost that one a day, between those two weeks, how many times has she gotten something? How many times has it still been passed along? Uh, is she, is she, at some point, she's just going to become antibiotic resistance, and she's going to get the gift that stays with her the rest of her life if she doesn't have it already. But having the ability to to choose these men, these men also are able to choose other women. And so the the group of people that are sleeping with each other Again, it might have been like fours and four with fours and fives and fives with fours and fives with sixes and sixes with sevens and sixes with fives. And you kind of had these little bubbles that worked its way up. Now it's sevens with t sevens with seven through 10. The top 20, 30 percent are all with each other and no one else gets into the game. So when you you are on these dating apps, 
when you are six, aren't successful and go, just randomly going up to somebody and chatting them up a little bit and getting a phone number, understand where, where society is kind of on this stuff. The other thing, she says uh, uh, personality is important, but then again, I'm sleeping with like a dude every day. And I'm I'm just basically using them for what they look like, so I don't. Their personality doesn't matter because it's a hookup. That's what almost all dating is now. And then if they hook up and they really like, I don't know, the sex they just had, they'll keep dating for a while until one of them finds somebody else, and then they move along. So if you find yourself in this position where you got broken up with, or something went wrong, or or you're bummed out, or you're unhappy, and you feel like you didn't do anything wrong. They just moved along. They lost the butterflies or they found somebody else to sleep with that was newer and different than you. Like it kind of started on dating apps. So obviously you get to talking to guys on there and it's so much easier on dating apps to, I guess, like be like, okay, let's go get a drink. And then you go get a drink and then you go home with him. It's like pretty simple. It's pretty straightforward. There's not a lot of groundwork that's like really needed. Um, I guess it's the same when you go out, but like, I, yeah, most of it started with dating apps. Now I'll go out and if I find a cute guy, I like, I'll go home with him. Um, no, see how casual it is. It's... If I find a cute guy that I like, I'll go home with him. She's going to burn out a lot of synapses because when you're, look, I, I, when I was a kid, my mother was a home cook and she was a very good cook, but it was, you know, it was a quote unquote adult food. We'd have spaghetti, which I loved, but a lot of times we'd have steak or pork chops and, and potatoes. Now as an adult, I love those things. I should eat, be eating a lot more of them. As a kid though, you want kid food. You want the, the yummy Yummy food, I guess you would call it. And and when you went to McDonald's, when you went to maybe a fast food place, when you went to Pizza Hut, where they had the red plastic cups and the uh, salad bar and, and you got your Pepsi in those red cups, uh, I did that when I was 10. That was a treat. That was really special. What happens if you do that with as an adult? You get diabetes. <laughs> you get really fat. You get unhealthy. Uh, you're not eating well. And you ultimately end up getting sick. I think the same thing's happening to her. So what happens when she gets married? What happens when she gets in a relationship? That's going to go very quickly. She'll want something that's open. She'll want something where she can, can keep, keep doing what she's doing because she's addicted to that McDonald's, you know, fast food, ice cream type diet. She doesn't want steak and potatoes once a day from, you know, the healthy place, which would be a, a long-term relationship or marriage. So this is happening to so many women right now that it just tells you where the market is. But yeah, it's not as hard as people think. I think people put too much pressure on it. Like people overthink it a little bit. It's actually really simple. Like you just go out, you talk to a guy, you like him and you take him home. <laughs> what is it going to take for one of the 300 or 400 or whatever it becomes at the end of the day? What is it going to take to get the right guy? What does the guy have to do to get a ring on it? What does he got to do for you? At this point, are you in a position to want to find the right guy if it happens? And what does that guy have to do? Guys, take notes here if you're interested. Yeah, I... I specifically left that segment in where he said that. He's putting her as the catch. He's basically, compared to him, he looks at her as a higher value person in the relationship. How can you tell? Because what is, he says, what does a guy have to get do to get you? What does a guy have to show you? What does a guy have to provide you? What does a pro guy have to 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 make available to you so that you'll choose him. That is completely the wrong framing in this situation. Now, if this girl had, if, if she had, if she'd never slept with a guy and she still had, you know, she still had her flower intact, as we would say, and she's very selective on dates and she, you know, is demure and sweet and kind and wants to only give it to the, the man that she thinks is going to be her partner for life, then his phrasing, you could say, maybe is a little bit better, which is what are you looking for in a guy? What does he need to bring to the table for you to ultimately choose him, marry him, sleep with him, whatever? But that's not the phrasing he uses. And so it, it, it falsely gives her maybe the perception that she's the catch. Now, if you were to ask me, if, if we were you know, in this conversation, and he asks me, what are you going to do to get her to like you? My answer would be nothing. Because number one, I'm not good looking enough. So there's, she's too shallow for me. And number two, 
Why would I want to be somewhere that 312 other guys have been? She, she would have to go through, she would have to climb mountains to prove herself to me that I should overlook her past. And there's nothing that she could say to do that because that's not a number you can just get rid of. And even if, even if you, you know, even if you were to talk to a medical professional, professional, like you'll see sometimes they put out articles on this stuff of why it doesn't matter. Even if you could snap your fingers and put everything that it, nothing had ever happened below the waist, but she remembered everything that happened to her, it's too late. That, that what, what I would comparatively say is that damage is done because now she's inevitably comparing you with 312 other men. She's comparing you to their looks, their height, how they were in the bedroom, how much money they had, how funny they were, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You are now in that comparison group. And even if you're a great guy, you're an amazing guy, if, you're one, if, you, if she's you know, sleeping with the top 20% of men and you're one of 300, statistically speaking, even if you were the best at some things, other guys are better in other areas. Who's to say you don't struggle on the bills one day? And she says, you know, Johnny was better at paying the bills or he had more money than if I was with Johnny, I wouldn't be worrying about this. What if you made the money? What if you were Johnny and you made all that money? Uh, but she says, well, Johnny wasn't the best in, in, in the bedroom. But Bill over here, Bill was the best in the bedroom. Yeah, you may be able to, to take care of business and pay all the bills. Uh, I shouldn't have used the name Bill. Uh, you may pay, pay all the bills, John, Johnny. Uh, and, and you got it going on there, but Bill's better in the bedroom and the bedroom's getting dull. So I'm going to go over there. What she will do is whatever she's missing in her life at the moment, she's going to start comparing you to the best of them. So some guy's always going to be better. He's funnier. Another guy's more interesting. Another guy know, knows all the hot spots in the city. Another guy is popular. Another guy's maybe a footballer or whatever. Another guy has money, or um, if I said money, another guy's great in the bedroom. Another guy's creative. Another guy, you can't win all those categories. And when somebody like this gets bored, they're going to find somebody else and a justification to move on because you're boring or you're, you're not Mr. Perfect in all the categories. So I just want to make that clear before she gives her answer here, that no matter what she says, it doesn't matter. You can't, she wants all things in one man and she will never get it. But what does he, what does she want out of a guy? What does he bring to the table? Honestly, it's crazy because my criteria is very simple. I want a guy who's loyal, family orientated, um, kind, non-judgmental, um, intelligent. I think intelligence is like a really important thing for me. Someone who's like, just like equal to the way that I think. And also my morals, like a lot of people say I don't have any morals, but I do. Spoiler alert. She does not. Um, so someone who's like on the same page as me with that. So it, they're not that crazy, but it is really hard to find a loyal, honest, nice guy these days. She's slept with 312 men. It's simple, honest, intelligent. Are you going to tell me that all the men that you've dated aren't any of those things? Then if that's the case, why did you sleep with them? Because they were hot. This is what Yana Hawking does. Oh, they were hot, even though we weren't going to, he's not boyfriend material. They're hot, so I slept with them. So you're going to tell me none of them were, none, none of them were long-term relationship worthy. Then something's wrong with you. Either they didn't pursue you in that manner and only slept with you, or they did pursue you in that manner and you realized, now she wouldn't say this out loud. She wouldn't say this out loud. But she probably, there's somewhere in that lizard brain of her saying, if a man will settle with me after a body count of 300 and for what I do for a living and et cetera, I don't think he's a very high value man if he'll settle for somebody like me. You may think that's crazy, but there's a lot of, a lot of times people get into relationships specifically because they don't think they're worthy of love. And so they seek it out to have it so that they have validation. But apparently, it's really hard to find a honest, tro uh, loyal, uh, trustworthy, intelligent, faithful guy. I don't think so. I don't think so. Oh, and she says nice. She wants a nice guy. What does nice mean? Nice means safe. 
But that's not, so she says she wants one thing, but then she keeps sleeping with the guys for a completely different reason. And none of it, you're going to tell me none of them were worth it. This is, this is why it doesn't work. Forever alone, alpha widow. Um, and maybe, I'm you're looking the wrong places. maybe you're looking in the wrong places, I mean, Are you, you know? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. I, I mean, I definitely could be. Um, but yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready to settle down. I'm ready to find someone. Um, I'm not just out here to, you know, people over or anything like that. Like I do want to settle down and I want to have a family. Um, but yeah, the right person hasn't come along yet. So I'm just going to keep waiting. <laughs> I, I she says, I'm going to keep waiting, but she's not waiting. She's sleeping with like a guy a day who search for Mr. Right while sleeping with a different dude every day. You don't. It's, it's cognitive dissonance at this point. Doing it for virality. It wasn't, it wasn't for anyone else but for me. I just wanted to experience lots of different people. Like I said, I'd been like pretty, I don't know, like non sexual beforehand. So I just wanted to, I'm like, I'm young. I want to experience life. You know, I'm turning 27 this year. I feel like while I'm young, I should go out and have fun. And I don't, I don't, I think I want to take this time to like really explore lots of different people before, yeah, I am ready to settle down and get married and, and with the same person for the rest of my life. I want you to understand and memorize all those buzzwords. They're everything you hear from these TikTok videos and on dating apps. And I'm still young. She's 27. I'm still young. I just want to explore. I want to, I want to have fun. All those buzzwords are, I'm not going to take any responsibility for what I'm doing. I'm, I'm giving my excuse that this is just for funsies. And then I'm going to go out and sleep with everybody. The problem is she is closing in on 30. Now, you may disagree with me. You may agree with me. If you look at her, she has some years left in the business. Again, because she says she's an only fool's content creator. If she's in the 0.02% of content creators, she's probably making $50,000, $100,000 a month per month or more. Is she going to be willing to give up that money and that lifestyle? The answer, we all know it, is no. So while she's looking for Mr. Right, while she's looking for Mr. Forever, she's out there on video humping and pumping and chumping all these guys. And she will do it as long as she can make this kind of money. It's, she gets used to the lifestyle. You get used to having that. I mean, can you imagine after taxes, even a 50% tax rate, can you imagine getting a check for $50,000 a month? I mean, that's like, you know what? I'd really like to buy like a Tesla. Mo I know you guys hate Tesla. Uh, but but I'm just picking a car that's what I, I don't know many like SUVs. But that's okay. I, I, that's like p picking out a Jeep Wagoneer, like top of the line leather decked out everything for a hundred grand and saving for a month or two to buy it, to buy a hundred thousand dollar vehicle. That's saving for one year to buy a $1.2 million house. You want that Gucci purse that's $3,500? That's like a day and a half worth of work. That doesn't go away until it's taken away. What will take it away from her? Her age, gravity, wrinkles. And she's going to be 33, 34, 35. Where did, the damage is done. And not, not just to her mentally, not just to her physically, but to her reputationally. There's no way on God's green earth you're going to convince any traditional family-minded guy to, to put a baby in this thing. It's just not going to happen. This is why we say women control the, the bedroom, men control the relationship. She can let all the guys in the world sleep with her, but it doesn't mean a single guy that's of quality, of worth, will make a wife out of her and give her a family. And this is not hating on her. This is not you know, being mean to her. It's, it's just men telling these women how we feel. Don't do this. Stop it. And all the women are going right down that, that path. And a matter of fact, I have a, let me pull up this video. I saved this video the other day. I think I played this in something, but let me, let me just pop it in here real quick. 
I'm going to, and I know I, I put this in another video, but this is, and I'm going to mute it because there's not much to, to hear. It's just a little bit of white noise, but outside of a club, I think this is in the UK. There's no men. Okay, you got a security guard or bouncer with an earpiece on. There's, they're not laughing. They're not having fun. They're not talking. They're not, they're not really doing anything. They're not really doing anything but queuing up to get inside a club. And, and I know I pointed this out in the last video I did it in, but one guy in white, one guy in blue, you had Mr. Security Guard back here in the suit, all the way back here, hey, him right there. Other than that, I, I mean, I do not see a single guy in this line. I don't see a, a, a single guy here. Where are they? Uh, they're just not here. And, and why? Because these men know a couple of things. Number one, the, the guys that are high quality, the guys that have the good looks, they don't have to get dressed up. They don't have to go to the clubs. They don't have to offer to pay women drinks. They don't have to flirt with them. All they have to do is go on, on, a, on a dating profile, put a, together a dating profile, go on Tinder or Hinge or whatever, and swipe. They go get coffee. The girl realizes he's not a stalker, and just like she says. And then we go to my place and smash. That guy's going to put zero effort into the dating market. He will never stop putting in zero effort because he doesn't have to. But what about the girls that are left behinds? What about the girls that maybe want to meet a quote-unquote nice guy? Well, those nice guys, they don't like what they look like on dating apps or they're not on dating apps. They're in the real world. And they used to go to the pubs and the clubs and the bars trying to hit on women. But when you get shot down so much by what men feel are inferior slags and then they say, well, I'm not going to even bother wasting my money or getting dressed to go to the clubs anymore, what do you end up with? You end up with a line of just women going into the club for nobody. And they're not even having fun. They're all on their phones. They're all just standing there trying to, you know, coochies hanging out and trying to, you know, look cuter than the girl next to them. The, the, the using the bedroom to trick men into marriage is done. Except for, you know, blue-pilled simps again. It was just like, for me, I don't know. I just, every day I would wake up and I'd be like, okay, well, who am I going to go on a date today? Like, who, who am I going to sleep with tonight? It was just, yeah, I don't know. It just kind of happened. It wasn't planned. <gasps> okay, so what is the goal next year? So 300, are we going for 400? Are you going to start bringing it down and start to kind of hone in on finding the right guy? I think now it's changed a little bit. I have what I call my regulars, which are like, a, it's like eight to nine people that I sort of will rotate with, I guess. It sounds so yeah. bad, but they know about what I do and who I am. Um, so they've agreed to it. And yeah, it's just like, you know, if I'm chilling in bed, I'll message one of them. They'll come over and maybe the next day I'll have another one over and I just sort of rotate them, obviously, because of what I do for work. Okay, so out of... She can simply... And hey, no hate on her because, uh, you know, I, I guess they're fine with Petri dishing uh, with the other guys inside this woman. Eight or nine she has on rotation. Whatever it's it's like it's like it's like ordering Chinese food. Today I I would like number eight, and so she texts guy number eight, and he comes over, and they do it. And then the next night or at night after that, she says, "I think I'd like. I'm feeling like a little kung pao chicken tonight. We're gonna go with number three. And he comes over. Now you could say it sucks for the dudes because they're literally like she's got dial up dial up D. You know, she can it's dial a D where she can just call a dude. But how is it negative for him? He shows up, plows it, pops his rocks, and then he's he's off doing the next thing. There's nine people in rotation. That's nine. Okay, and, and okay, look at it this way. That's nine guys that are not marriage material for her or anybody else. They're good-looking guys that probably also have other girlfriends or girls that they're sleeping with. Why would they settle down? Why would they choose her to have a family with? Why would they choose any woman to have a family with when this is what's going on? They're not going to. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, I haven't found the one yet. <laughs>
Yeah, look, I'm not going to lie. My DMs are quite full, so I don't check all of them. I feel like, unfortunately, it is just right place, right time. If someone's lucky enough to find me out or something or find me on a dating app, then, um, yeah, that's probably the best way. No, yeah, that's the interesting thing for me is I've never done this for validation. I don't need validation. I'm incredibly confident. I know who I am as a person. It's not about that at all. I don't need love. I was raised in a really happy, healthy household with parents who loved me and still love me and support me knowing what I do for work now. Um, so it's definitely not about that. Like, it's just, as I said, like, just to explore and enjoy my life. And, you know, you only have one life. So what's the point of sitting inside, scared to do what you want to do, you know? Interesting thing. She says, I come from a happy household. I, I'm not doing this for validation. I'm not doing this for love. Uh, I'm just kind of doing it to have fun. But she came from, now this is according to her, whether it's true or not, I don't know. But let's let's say you're on a date with a woman and she says, uh, you know, you're trying to feel out, is she cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs or is she legit? And so you ask her, tell me about your family. It's, oh, I love my mom. I love my dad. They're supportive of my work. Uh, I come from a, a good family. Nothing, nothing was really bad or wrong. You're going, hey, okay. She gets along with her family. Dad's still in the picture. Good family. They support what she does. Everything's good, right? No, no, that's still a red flag. There, there's nothing you can really, you know, sink your hook into to say, okay, this is a good one because dad's still in her life or family or 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 she she participated in church. What? None of that matters, really. I have daddy issues. <laughs> how old are you? How old are you? Um, I am 26 now. Okay. If you were to trade it all right now. For okay. This is, this is the clutch. This is key. This is the most important thing I want you, I want to get out of this video. How old Sorry, are you? I don't have daddy issues. <laughs> how old are you? How old are you? Um, I am 26 now. Okay. If you were to trade it all right now for the right guy, marriage, kids, and family, uh, would you, would you do that? Yeah. 100% for sure. Yep. That's amazing. <laughs> you cut out there. I, um, I, by the, by the way, she's like, to settle down and um, I'm just doing this for fun until I find the right person. By the way, the connection is a little choppy because I'm in the Northeast and, uh, you know, she's out in Australia. So we're getting a little bit of connection issues. But yeah, I think you guys got that. Yes, she would uh, She would trade up for the right person. Um, I would, you, would you trade it all for the right man? She has done this for a year. At 25, she had a body count of 12. Not great. Not great in any way, shape, or form. But now she says, I would trade it all away and give it all up for the right man that would give me the family and the home and everything. But if you go back a year in time and you say, I'd give it all up, why did you do it in the first place? She was 25. She was with 12 dudes. So let's say she started at 18. You know, that's two a year, we'll call it, from 8 to 25. Uh, that's roughly about two a year. She went from two a year to five in a day. And when asked if you could give it all up and return your experiences for a good traditional man, would you do it? And she says, yes. Then the million dollar question is, why did you do it in the first place? And what's her answer? I was bored. I'm just waiting for the right guy. I'm waiting for Prince Charming to sweep me off his feet, off my feet. I'm waiting for, 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 for Mr. Forever. But until he shows up, I'm just going to keep sleeping with dudes and having fun. Mr. Forever is not coming. He might have at 25 with a body count of 12. He definitely would have for 25 and a body count of zero, one, maybe two or three. But at 27, with a body count of 312 plus, and having eight or nine men on rotation, you randomly call to come plow you. And you doing only fool's work. And you letting these guys raw dog. And, and, and. She went, in just the course of a, a year, year and a half, she went from a woman that a lot of guys would have said, I, man, I'd work hard to make a woman like this happy. She'd look good on my arm going into a party. I'd work hard to give her a good home. I'd work hard to, to be a good man to her. She went in the course of one year, she went from that to utterly, utterly undateable long-term, unmarriable. Never have a child with a woman like this. She, it, it, it's taking a slightly used Ferrari 
or Porsche. And instead of letting it sit in a garage where you charge the battery on a trickle charger, pull it out twice a year to wash it, wax it, and put it back away. Instead of doing that, she she took the car, which is her body, took it out of the shop, and just did like 50 laps around a dirt track and then drove it off of a cliff into a, like it's trashed, it's trashed. And even if you could wipe away all the things physically that might be wrong with her STIs, whatever, the 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 damage of not being able to find one good man that will fill all the roles that she wants is done, and that's forever, and it's over with. It's over with. So when I do these videos, yes, I poke fun at these women. Yes, I roast them. Yes, we're going to laugh at the insanity. But overall, this message is for society. I was going to say two people, two types of people, but it's for society. Men, if you're not getting the opportunity at these women, don't shed a tear. This is, these, this is what you're missing out as a potential future spouse, as a, a potential future mother to your kids. Don't lose sleep over that. Don't be fooled into it either. Don't think you're finding a unicorn when come to find out it's not really a unicorn, but a whole bunch of hot dogs down a hallway. And number two, if any of you encounter women like this, don't speak to them as if they're the value. Don't speak to them if they have something to offer. Don't speak to them as what you need to do to earn their love. What they need to be doing is coming forward saying, how can I fix my past to get a man that I want? The answer is you can't. But letting the next generation of women coming up seeing that insanity and then saying, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to learn something from this. The 60s were wild and the 70s were pretty wild. What happened in the 80s? Very conservative decade. The 90s kind of broke out of that a little bit more. 2000, 2010, 2020, it got even crazier. I think we're going to have another smash of conservatism coming through when it comes to dating, when it comes to what's acceptable for women to do when it comes to dating. Maybe I'm wrong, but in the meantime, I think a lot of men are out because of it. And now she's basically the world's most lifelike doll that can walk and talk and perform and move around and act like a normal human being. But there's only one good thing, one thing she's good for. And in the long run, she'll find out that's why young men have zero value and old women have zero value. Men grow in value, women lose it, and, and the two shall never meet. Guys, if you like this content, tonight I'm going to do, uh, uh, we're doing uh, 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 two movies, Saturday night at the movies over at Locals uh, for supporters. So four bucks a month, you get to come do live streams. I do eight to 10 a month. Great group of guys. We have drinks, we share memes, we have laughs. So if you find yourself just chilling uh, on, on the weekends without anything to do, come over and join a great community of guys. We have so much fun on Saturdays. Uh, and then sometimes uh, on Sundays, I do a little bit of uh, uh, Buffalo Bills football because I like the Bills. We do live streams for that. I'm going to save my voice to the live stream tonight, so we'll leave it there. Uh, guys, uh, we'll see you in the next one.